Hello and welcome to PR TV. It's often said that when PR budgets are cut, there's a recession looming. But this global recession struck with very little warning. How well is PR equipped to deal with hard times? It's hard to say whether, in fact, we're weathering the storm or perhaps there's a lag um, and it's still coming. But I think, you know, articles in the paper over recent weeks have shown that actually PR companies are doing quite well uh, in the current environment. And I think that there are a couple of reasons for that. Um, I think that, number one, PR provides really good bang for buck. Money is being taken from advertising and being put into public relations. So while our sister agencies in the ad world are beginning to hurt quite a lot, public relations, this is a huge opportunity for us. And I think it's also important to understand that PR plays a big role in, in issues management. And issues management is also a consideration uh, in, in recessionary time. For an organisation working in the not-for-profit sector, in the community sector specifically like Anglicare, you know, we've got a, a genuine role to be playing in meeting the needs of people impacted by the global financial crisis. Um, so we find ourselves um, caught between a rock and a hard place. On the one hand, we're, we're suffering from a, a reduction in the fundraising income we're able to, to get, and we're also seeing a, a increased demand for our services. Um, this obviously give, brings us both opportunities and challenges. Um, the, the challenge obviously is to, to maintain uh, our operations as they are and meet the, the increased need. But I think the opportunity there too is, is for us as PR practitioners in that space is to um, be able to communicate the need uh, and communicate uh, the stories of people who are doing it tough uh, in a way that's going to actually impact um, government uh, and policy makers and also uh, the broader public. It's, it's very tough worldwide. Um, in, in, the, in the marketplace and I think there is one thing that organisations should not do and several things they should do uh, in relation to marketing and corporate communication. One thing they shouldn't do I think is the slash and burn approach which is very tempting. We need to cut so let's slash. When you slash and burn you cut off things that are core functions and important to your business as well as things that are not. You lose core intellectual property. Um, a more intelligent approach is to do things like use measurement to find out what really counts, what's working best, and get rid of some of the functions, by all means, but get rid of the functions that aren't generating a result, and focus on doing less, but doing the bits that really, really matter. I think the approach that Tex100 is taking globally is to focus on core competency. Um, and to really perhaps not be as creative or as opportunistic as perhaps we would have been in good economic times, but to really knuckle down and focus on what we are really good at doing. And I think that's, that's probably an important piece of advice for, for any company, is just to really focus on core competency. Look for cost-efficient strategies and the benefit of online media wikis, blogs, viral campaigns, is they offer us a lot of very low cost methods. So maybe it's not a TV campaign, maybe it's, a, it's an online campaign. We continue to invest in our people. Um, this business is all about people, so we will do anything not to have to lay people off. Um, and that's actually come from our chief executive, is that we are protecting jobs and we are actively recruiting in the market now part-time, flexible working arrangements, job sharing, um, and utilising technology. There's absolutely no reason why people can't work from home um, and, and you know, dial in to conference calls and be in, stay in touch with their bosses through email or Skype um, or, or phone. So I think that it's really about being more flexible. So there is lots of opportunities to often step in and build your brand, take, a, take advantage of low-cost opportunities out there if, if, it, if you're a smart organisation. And a reminder to PRIA members, the newsletter is available now. Just log on to the PRIA website. Now, in our next edition, we take a lot more optimistic look as we gaze into the future and ask the panel to do a little bit of fortune-telling for us, sharing their vision of public relations five years from now, ten years from now. That's the crystal ball in our next edition. Thank you very much for joining us on PRTV and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.